Hi guys, welcome to English Kaksha again. Today we are going to do the next poem of tenth class, A Tiger in the Zoo. Whenever we talk about the zoo, the first image that comes in our mind is of a tiger and a lion that we used to see captivated in the zoo. But have we ever thought what kind of life they are having? Are they happy with their life? No, never. Who likes to be captivated? No one. The same message is given by the poet George Leslie Norris in this poem, The Tiger in the Zoo. So we will read the text and we will see what hidden message the poet is giving here. A Tiger in the Zoo is a poem that is penned by Leslie Norris. Let's read about the poet. George Leslie Norris was a prize winning Welsh poet and short story writer. He won numerous awards for his literary work. He was the only writer to have been elected a fellow of both the Welsh Academy and England's Royal Academy. Now we will see what is given in this poem. This poem, The Tiger in the Zoo, depicts how a tiger behaves and reacts in the zoo. Actually, the poet arouses the sympathy of the readers for the enslaved, uncaged and entrapped animal. Now we will read stanza 1 and before the explanation we will see which rhyming scheme is given in this stanza. He stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quiet in his quiet rage. Vivid stripes A. Off his cage B. On pads of velvet quiet C. And quiet rage. Cage and rage. Sounding same so it will be B. The rhyming scheme of this stanza is A, B, C, B. Actually the whole poem that is consisting 5 stanzas having the consistent rhyming scheme that is A, B, C, B. Now let's see what these lines actually convey. He stalks. He means the tiger. Stalks means moves. In his vivid stripes. Vivid means deep bright. Stripes lines. It means the tiger moves with his bright lines or the stripes that he is having upon his body as his identity. The few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quite. Pads means the fleshy underparts of an animal's feet and velvet is fabric. Quite rage that is uncontrolled anger. So what is given in this stanza? Here the poet actually portrays a tiger who is a beast of the forest. But here he is enslaved and put in a cage in the zoo. He is deprived not only of his natural habitat but also of essential life. But the poet is saying here, he says that the tiger walks with his very deep or bright stripes and a few steps only he takes in his cage of the zoo. How? In a proud, stiff and angry manner. And his velvet-like fleshy underpart of feet are noiseless. He is walking with violent, uncontrollable anger. Standard 2. He should be lurking in shadow, sliding through long grass near the water hole where plump deer pass. Lurking means waiting. Sliding means moving quickly. And plum means fat deer. He says that he should be lurking. Means he should be allowed while waiting in shadow and moving quickly through the long grass near the water hole where the fat deer pass. Plum means fat or round. Fine. But actually in the second stanza he presents a pathetic sight. He presents a pathetic, pathetic sight of the tiger and contrasts his life in a zoo. With the tiger in the forest. What he says? Usually a tiger in the forest moves around in shadow of the dense trees or hiding behind a long grass near the water hole waiting to attack on his prey that can be a deer. But the tiger which is in the zoo is captivated and he is dependent upon the zookeeper for his food. But he feels that that instead of being in the zoo the tiger should be waiting while hiding himself in the shadow 
and moving without being noticed near the water hole where the plum deer pass so means he wants to convey that the tiger should be left free and they should not be deprived of their natural habitat fine now see stanza 3 he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge baring his white fangs his claws terrorizing the village snarling means making an angry or warning sound and fangs means white cannon teeth that an animal is always having which animals like dog wolf or tiger terrorizing terrorizing means threatening so what is given in this stanza actually in this stanza the poet describes his natural behavior which he is deprived of in the cage right in his natural habitat he should be making an angry warning sound around houses situated at the edge of the jungle and he should be terrorizing the villagers with his white cannon teeth and his claws basically the tigers used to do this but now the tiger is in the zoo and he is not doing all these things so that's why the poet feels that the tiger should be making an angry warning sound around the houses situated at the edge of the jungle to threaten the villagers right now see stanza 4 but he is locked in concrete cell his strength behind bars stalking the length of the cage ignoring visitors concrete means a building material made from gravel sand cement etc cell cell means a small room fine and stalking means walking the length of the cage ignoring visitors in this stanza he says that the tiger is locked in a strong and solid concrete cell of the zoo his strength is strained behind the bars of the cell but he is walking there in proud and stiff manner without taking notice of the visitors who are the visitors human beings are the visitors fine now see stanza 5 he hears the last voice at night the patrolling cars and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars he hears the last voice at night in these lines he says that the tiger hears the sound of the cars that go about patrolling the zoo to make sure that everything is in order and his eyes are his eyes and the stars are called brilliant here why because his eyes shine at night and having a strong desire for a free life in the natural world full of stars that's why it is called here brilliant eyes are the brilliant stars fine so this is from the poem now we will see which kind of literary devices are used in this poem first is alliteration that is used in the first stanza stalks in his vivid strides here s s sound is repeated locked in concrete cell c c is repeated his strength behind bars b b fine so this is alliteration the next literary device that is used in this poem is repetition on the pads of velvet quite in his quite rage quite and quite this word is repeated this is called repetition and second time it is used in the lines and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars brilliant and brilliant is repeated that's why it is repetition the next device that is used is oxymoron oxymoron it is used in the quiet rage why it is oxymoron whenever the two words that are contradictory in their meaning like quiet and rage quiet means silence and rage means anger both are contradictory both are comparative of one another right so that's why it is oxymoron metaphor is also used and it is used on the pads of velvet quiet here animals claws are compared to a velvet so this is from the poem a tiger in the zoo i hope each and everything is clear to you thank you